Alright, hey guys, as always, it's been a bloody long time before I made a video, and uh, here we are again. Uh, I want to talk about FM23 and Liverpool, and if you guys take charge about the, of the game, um, who to keep and who to sell, and I think this is a pretty basic thing, a lot of people already know this. Um, now, if you do have the in-game editor and you want to see the hidden stats and all that stuff, that's totally cool. I'm fine with that, do what you want to do, but um, I would like to tell you that it might spoil the game for you. If you have that much access and that much knowledge, so I'm going to give you down, give you some tips on how to pick and decide which players to sell and which players to buy, and and all this is coming into the idea. If you do not use any references online, you don't check things like FM Scout, you don't check things like um, basically any database online that will give you information of the players' hidden abilities, uh, and you don't have the editor. So if you don't have all this knowledge how to scout, how to know if the players are actually good before you buy them, and whether they are worth it. So first thing, first and foremost, the most important thing when you start any game is you must go to your uh, your uh, staff and you must check whether your scouts are good enough. Now you need to have a good number of scouts and these need to be pretty, pretty high. Uh, if you want to make this like this uh, ability to judge uh, ability and potential even higher, uh, you just need to you know, sell, I mean, sorry, fire and hire scouts. And Liverpool starts off with quite a number of scouts who I fired because a lot of them actually have under 15 abilities. You can still keep them because it keeps your average pretty high, uh, but I feel that I'd rather have them fired, I would say, and pay for those who are actually good enough so that I don't have to pay double because I'm actually conservative and I'm trying to save money. Uh, yeah, you get my point. But when you go to recruitment team, Look for your scouts, uh, sort them by judging player potential and judging player ability, and look for scouts that all the way, you know, uh, find all the way at the bottom. So some of these actually have pretty low uh, ability to judge abilities, and these are all worth selling. You can actually sell all of these and get people who actually can judge uh, a lot better. So right now, uh, you know, overall attributes that we have, some of them may be worth selling, some of them may be worth buying. So you go to stop search, Go to the search here, you go to staff role, recruitment team scout, attributes pick for a scout, at least 15, preferred job is scout. This is important because it's no point if you find someone with insane scouting stats, but they don't prefer to be a scout. That's, you know, you're just wasting your time getting them into a contract, when, and later you realize that they, they could actually be used for some other role, and you screwed up the negotiations, and they don't want to talk to you for another two years. So, uh, once you sorted them, go to their um, mental attributes, judging player potential and ability. Let's go to any one of these and you can see that adaptability, ability and potential. These are all very, very valuable stats. Now, um, for me, but personally, I sort by adaptability first, ability and then potential. So what this does is it makes sure that it sorts um, the first thing that's sorted in priority is potential. Ability second, and then adaptability third. Now, to, to do that in the right order, you have to sort adaptability first, ability second, and potential third. Then you get the highest potential first, highest adaptability second, and highest, uh, sorry, highest ability second, and highest adaptability third. Now, this is important. Hey, there's actually a free agent here who I might be able to pick up. Uh, this guy's pretty good. He's young as well, uh, which is important. So, you're going to just approach to sign him. He wants to be technical director. Uh, let's see whether we can just lock it down because I don't think I'm going to hire another technical director right now. And let's just drop this to 5.75 and see what happens. He wants a lot higher wage and he wants a yearly wage buy. So let's exclude that and let's just drop this twice and let's see if we can suggest the terms. Now he's not very happy about that. But anyway, his demands were pretty insane. So I don't think we could have got him either way. Uh, let's see if we can get some of these other random scouts. Uh, let's approach the sign. Chief Scout. He wants to be Chief Scout, huh? Who's our Chief Scout? Dave Fallows. Who has got pretty good stats. Ooh, no. If he's Chief Scout, we wouldn't be able to... Uh, we wouldn't be able to... Uh, what do you call this? Sign him. Anyway. So. Let's walk away from this one. Uh, this guy is a scout. He's just a regular scout. He's in sp spotting, though. Wonder if we can afford him. Looks like it's not that expensive, to be honest. Sure. 
Alright, we got ourselves a, the best scout in the world, arguably. We got some pretty insane stats. Um, yeah, so just like that, you look for some scouts, you sign them up, and then you increase these stats. What that happens is when you go and scout for an actual player, like you go to scouting, uh, you go for players in range, uh, you can pick the world package. I want to actually save some costs of going for the Europe package. Uh, but it's totally up to you. The thing is, when you pick uh, a different package, your transfer budget is affected as well. So just take note of that. Uh, this is the scouting budget, as you can see. If you increase the scouting budget, the transfer budget goes down significantly. So just be careful when you're doing that. Uh, because there's no point if you have a lot of budget in your scouting, but you're not able to buy the player at the end of the day. That's also going to hurt you. Uh, so when you're scouting for players, right? Um, what you can do is you can look for a player who is similar to a good player that you know. For example, I want to look for a player who is as good as Mohamed Salah, right? So what I can do is under the players, I go to uh, Scouting Center. I go to, wait, sorry, Players in Range. Yeah, there we go, Players in Range. Let's go to Salah. Okay. And let's just uh, make sure this is not ticked. Uh, what do I feel like it didn't search accordingly? Salah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. I think it's because we are using the uh, European package. So some of them are not showing. Yikes. Okay. But anyway. It would be able to find you players who have similar caliber to that of Mohamed Salah. So as you can see, Mane shows up, yikes, uh, and then a lot of other players show up. Uh, but what you can do is you can actually decrease the age to 21 if you want to find someone who's under 21. So the only one who's close enough to be like Mohamed Salah in the range is Bukayo Saka. So this is important. Uh, you can also increase your scouting range to world. And if you do that, it's going to give you a lot more uh, players, you know, information. So... I just don't feel like I want to right now scout outside of uh, Europe. I just want to save a little bit of cost this season. Then once we win some stuff, I'm going to go big next season and scout for more international players. Uh, but let's say you want to find someone who's also like Messi. You could do that. You can pick Lionel Messi. Uh, you can make the age like under 23. And then you get some of the best players in the world who are under 23 who could be potentially as good, if not better, than Lionel Messi. Jamal Musiala is a wonder kid. Uh, he's one of the best players in the world. So... As you can see, I've already added him to my shortlist, which is why he's gold in color. Uh, but he is a very good signing. So this is how you can scout players without needing to know their hidden potential. Because the game actually allows you to search for players who have similar stats and abilities to that of an uh, already existing player who you know is actually good. And that way, in a way, you're secretly studying wonder kids. Uh, but it all comes down to whether they have been uh, scouted before or there's enough knowledge of them overall. If they're a player who's never heard of, uh, they may not show up, which is a little bit mysterious. So if you're looking for like hidden gems and stuff, you really have to go uh, even deeper. Another important column that you're gonna keep, uh, you know, is one of the mental abilities that's important is this thing called determination. This is very important because players with high determination tend to perform better, tend to train better, and tend to overall improve a lot faster. And one of the reasons I say this is important is if you look for a player that I recently signed, like Jude Bellingham, uh, who is basically the only midfielder I, I really signed here, he has a determination of 20. It's monstrous. I don't think I've ever seen another player with determination 20. I'm sure there are, but like I rarely, look for, I rarely find players with determination 20, which is what makes Jude Bellingham arguably the best midfielder in the world because he's just going to get better and better. He's only 19. I think by the time he's 30, he's going to be a legendary midfielder. There's, there's really no doubt about it, right? So uh, as, let me just show you my transfers before we proceed. Under my transfer history, as you can see, all of these players before July were already in the game. They were done by Liverpool. When I took over, first thing I did is interact with the board. I got Jude Bellingham in because they're aware our midfield is mostly injured. A lot of them are senior players. Uh, and so I got him in. Uh, and then I sold uh, Adrian Nabiketa. And then I bought uh, Tommy Setford and Emery Tesco. And this is important because, um, you know, Liverpool are mainly a sell to buy club. Uh, but you have so many players who are young and on loans. You could sell them if you feel that they are underwhelming, underperforming. 
Uh, but since they're all on loans, it's really not, you know, not worth uh, touching them yet because you don't really know their true potential. And their value also goes up and their potential goes up. So you'd rather have them completed their loan and come back so you know how good they actually are before deciding if you want to sell them or send them on another loan. And then you can still make money from loans, but it's not as valuable as just selling off the player because you don't have to worry about um, too much of things like, you know, you only can loan out players who, you know, uh, uh, whilst, while paying for their uh, salary or stuff like that, right? A lot of clubs, when they want to loan players, they don't really want to pay most of their salary. So that's important. Uh, so other than Jude Bellingham, the other player I scouted is Tommy Setford, who is the only one I feel who could be a decent sweeper keeper. Um, but his first touch really sucks. So I'm really working on improving his first touch. But other than that, he has pretty decent stats for his age. Uh, so I think he's he, he's going to be capably or arguably close to Allison's capability when he's at least 25. So that's pretty nice to have. The other one is a striker from Stoke. As you can see, all my players are English, the ones I've been signing. And I think this is important because you don't have to worry too much about the rules that keep away foreign players. Uh, also, you don't have visa and all of those stuff. They automatically qualify for being a English player. Uh, and also, they, their value goes up significantly higher than those foreign players uh, you know, because they're English. Just because they're English, they're already more expensive. But Tommy Setford and Emery Tesco, as you can see, are still reasonably cheap considering the abilities they have, uh, determination and finishing. Like Tesco doesn't need any flair because I'm using him as a complete forward and all of his stats are pretty insane. He's 16 years old. It's pretty insane. I feel that no one else needs to be signed for Liverpool because they have enough players. The only one I'm really upset about is the sale of Minamino and Sadio Mane. These, sorry, um, Nico Williams actually and Sadio Mane because Nico Williams stats are pretty darn scary. He has really good stats for being a you know backup right winger, especially to cover Trent. But I don't know, really don't know why they sold him. I would think of buying him back, but I don't know. I don't know whether he's up for it. But anyway, we could scout him, put some pressure on him. So I'm doing that. Nabiketa, I feel, is just someone who's always injured. He's always injured. Let me just look at his development or his reports. There you go. Very susceptible to injuries. It's always the case. He's always injured. I'm sure when he goes to Manchester City, he's going to become a god or whatever. But in Liverpool, he's always injured, so I really don't see the value of using him. But other than that, his stats are really insane. If you use him as a BBM, his stats are pretty scary, not going to lie. So he's only 27, he has three more years to improve. So if you could keep him un in uninjured and in Liverpool, that's great. But I felt that if there's anyone who's immediately in demand to sell, it's going to be Nabi Keita. The other person I've been trying to sell is Ox and Nat Williams. Uh, Ox is always injured, and Nat Williams is... And just not a very good player, but uh, yeah, uh, those are the other two players who are thinking of pushing off. Now, uh, here's another important thing when you are loaning out your players, uh, let's see responsibilities, transfers, contracts, offered to clubs. So, over here, uh, it's important when you are offering when you're setting a player into their uh, transfer or uh, loan list that you make sure that they are set to playing time at least regular starter. Uh, and their facilities is at least good. This is important because if it's anything lower, they may not progress as well, or they may not progress as fast. The other thing you could do is drop their playing wage percentage to be like 60, 70%. Uh, and this will increase their chances. Uh, I mean, yeah, if you drop the playing wage percentage, it will increase the chances of actually uh, receiving loans. Uh, but you will have to bear the, the balance cost. That's basically the difference. Let's just confirm that little difference there. Uh, this is important if you're trying to keep players. Uh, but yeah, let's go to the squad itself. Now, for the under 18 squad, first thing I do is anyone who has a potential of four star or more, I move them to under 21. This is important because they progress a lot faster if they are in a more senior squad. The downside is that they may struggle, they may be more nervous, and they may get more injuries. For under 21 to under 18, I almost see no difference. Players get injured the same, they progress the same. But if they are if they are like an under 18 player and you put them in the senior squad, they will struggle to perform. They will struggle to, they will often get more injuries because they're just not strong enough. Uh, and it's a lot more risky to do that. So my suggestion, if you want a player to progress faster, they're an under 18, you see the potential is like four star or more, you can put them in under 21. Uh, if they are three star, you can just leave them for now and you know that once they get to 
uh, four star, you can just move them up. Or once they are actually 21, you can actually move them up. That's fine. Uh, sorry, 18. You can move them up. That's fine. As for the under 21 itself, uh, I look for players whose ability is at least two star and I move them to senior squad. The only reason I didn't move Nat Williams is because his potential absolutely sucks. That's basically it. Uh, but everyone else, I try to keep them in the under 21 squad. And if I need to, I use them um, as much as possible in the uh, what do you call the senior squad. Uh, unfortunately, I can't use some of these people for uh, because they're unregistered for the uh, Milan game in Europe. So it's up to you if you want to register them and use them more as a cup player. You could do things like that. It's very specific, uh, but it's something for you to consider if you want to. Uh, so you can improve the player a lot faster. I personally am putting a lot of these players in the development list. Uh, so they've been listed out for loan. It's just not showing here yet, but uh, they are actually listed out for loan. So they'll improve in that way. Uh, now let me go to the senior squad. Uh, okay, in the senior squad, I'm going to sort by ability to show you the lowest abilities that I have. So some of these players who are below three stars. Uh, these are players who are all up and, up and coming. Anyone who's above 3 stars just deserves a place in the first team because they're already very really good players. As you can see, some of them, their abilities are dropping over time because they haven't been playing. They haven't had a chance to develop. They've been injured or whatever. Uh, so there's a reason to you know keep them in the first team and keep them playing because as a player plays, you can actually tap into their potential. If they don't play as much or they don't see as much game time, they often will remain stagnant at around 3 stars. This is just the case for everyone. So what I do is I take advantage of the fact that Liverpool has so many midweek fixtures and I do a lot of squad rotation. I constantly rotate the squad by sorting for whoever has a higher injury risk. So if any player has an injury risk of high, I don't put them in the squad. And I, even though it may risk me getting a draw or a loss, I'd rather do that than to have the players injured in the next game, <laughs> which is worse, trust me. Um, so this is, that's important. Uh, as for the players you can see here, some of them are not really up to 2 star, but I'm keeping them because their potential is 4 stars and they are absolutely insane in terms of stats and they give me good backup, so I'm doing that. What you can do uh, is, some of these are out on loan, so that's fine, um, they, they're not very important yet, but some of these are not out on loan, like these 4. Uh, and I'm actually using them as backup for the first team because they seem to have decent stats and they play in some important positions. Tommy said for them keeping him as a backup keeper because uh, there's really no reason not to. And what I can do is I can always make him available for under 18s uh, until match fit or whatever. Uh, whenever I feel like you know I need him to get some match, get some game time, and get some improvement time. So you can still keep them in the first team as a backup and make them available for under 18s or whatever. And let the, uh, what do you call this, the managers decide accordingly. So you could do that to make sure they have sufficient game time. Uh, while keeping them in the first team in case you suddenly need them to, to cover for something. So that's important. Um, let's see. This one's injured. This one is available. And Calvin Ramsey is injured. Okay. Now, let me show you uh, the schedule and how to work with it. So Milan is the next game, uh, and then there's Fulham. So between these two, we can easily do some squad rotation. Now, as for the players itself, of who you should prioritize, um, it's all about potential. Just sort by potential and you'll get most of Liverpool's wonder kids. Some of them may be a little bit hidden. I know there are some players here whose potential you can't really see because they're quite hidden. And my suggestion is always just put them under development. That's what I did. Put them for development, send them out on loan. If they come back with four stars, keep them. They are basically your wonder kids. Don't waste your time trying to buy the best players in the world because you can produce them with such an insane youth academy uh, like Liverpool. And that's very, very important. Because if you look at something like Liverpool's uh, development center, uh, wait, where is it? Club info, there we go, facilities. Uh, there we go. There we go. Pitch condition, perfect. Training facility, state of the art. State of the art. These mean that the players are better sometimes kept at your club than even you know sent out. That's something important. Uh, but they have to get enough game time. And because in Anfield you don't always get the game time you want, especially in the senior squad, um, you might want to consider loaning them out instead. That's the only difference that I would say. 
But if you ask me, what if I have a player that's five star potential? Do I want to loan them out? No, my suggestion is just keep them in the first team and play them as often as you can because they will improve significantly faster. That's the important thing. How to make sure that you can see their potential and ability accurately. First thing, which is the staff, uh, fire and hire the right people. You have the ability to see the potential. That's very important. Uh, and then uh, make sure when you're scouting, you scout the players according to their uh, matching a, a professional player who's already playing. So you know how good they you know, could potentially be. And then when you look at a specific player, look for a stat such as determination, which is a very, very important stat that will tell you if the player is going to improve significantly faster than everyone else around them. This does not mean that a player is not good. Let's say your determination is 10. It doesn't mean the player is not good. It just means it's going to take them a lot more time to show up. So they may be better when they are like 29, 30. Like for example, Gundawan is already 31. His determination is irrelevant because he's always going to you know, use his monstrous stats to gain advantage over his opponents. So this is something to remember. But if you do find a very young player with very high determination, that's very cool because their development is going to be super fast. Uh, so that's basically it. It's the only stat that you can rely on if you can't see the hidden stats. So that's very, very important. Uh, so yeah, that's basically my tips. Now let's just proceed and I'll show you how the game goes on for me and how I handle it. Uh, let's just go all the way to Milan's game, which is coming up pretty soon. Now, a day after the Brighton game, this is something that I do, which is I go to training, I go to rest. I'm keeping the intensity at normal. You could do double intensity, but if you have players who have very, very high injury susceptibility, my suggestion is once the season has begun and you're actually playing games back to back, is drop the um, the training intensity to normal instead of doubling it. Set to automatic here. After you highlight everything, you control A, you select all the players, training intensity automatic, it'll follow the settings up here, as you can see. So that's no half, half, normal, normal, and then click set to physio recommendation. This may make some of it double, but don't worry, the physio knows the right thing to do, so long as your physio are good. So make sure your physio stats are pretty high, otherwise they're gonna be shit at making the decisions. And you're going to have everyone injured. And this is particularly important before your attacking training starts. Because that's where most players get injured. Yes, yes, player of the week is Haaland. I get it, I get it. Haaland's the best. Um, persuade Phillips to find a new club. Let's do that. Yep, okay, there we go. Phillips is going to find a new club. Let's try to uh, offer him again. Uh, let's drop him down to 4 million. And offer him out. There we go. Um, yep, it, it's going to be a little bit tricky to get offers for him at this point, actually, because the transfer window is closed. But it's fine. Some people may be wanting to get, you know, make him offers off season, and he might be usable after that. I don't know if his potential actually gets better if you keep playing him, because some players, uh, they only show up when you play them, and other than that, the scout will never figure out what's wrong with them. They'll be like, why? Why does your potential go up? Try playing the player for 10 games and see them better than Mohamed Salah. It's quite scary when that happens. Um, you know what we're going to do is we're going to transfer him and add him available for a loan as well. I think that might increase his chances of actually going out and improving. Uh, staff number updates. Yeah, we've got some changes in staffs. Okay, let's attend the meeting. I like this meeting feature. This is kind of cool. Uh, makes things a lot easier. So that I update things on a weekly basis instead of needing to do it manually every time and remembering doing it or, and remembering to do it manually every time. So yeah, uh, sure. Let's accept these. These are good suggestions. Um, right. Mm. I think it's still important to improve these center backs, uh, center backs jumping and aerial reach. So I'm just going to move on. Uh, weaker foot development is always worth suggestions. So I'm just going to pick it up. Uh, Luis Kumas is just suggesting him to go to the under 18s. I'm just going to move on because I've already set him to be in the senior squad, but play for the under 18. So that's fine. And the meeting here. New. Um, with, with international matches approaching, do you think Ibrahim Konate deserves of a call up? Uh, I think he deserves it. 
Yeah, okay, sure, let's do that. Let's do some random media people. Uh, I want to sell some spicy news, I guess. Uh, let's see. Oh, he's actually going to consider Kanate because of what I said. That's kind of cool. I never knew that it would have such an impact. I'm just going to redo this setting midweek. Uh, just because I know some players would have recovered and you know the the game is going to go one day before the actual game day so I want to make sure there's no injuries by doing this again so it's good practice the other thing you can obviously do is just save the game and keep trying it again and again but I trust my methods have worked so far uh, and if the player is meant to get injured there's really nothing much you can do about it but just remember one day before the actual game try to check if they have back-to-back -back training like on 12th they have back-to-back -back attacking training uh, and it's very intense so you want to do that method I taught you in the training rest uh, to reduce the chances of getting injured. As you can see, I don't have any players that are injured, so that's super cool. Uh, I'm not going to take any of these suggestions, it's not important for me. Let's go to Milan's game day. And let's proceed to the setup of the tactics itself. We'll just go to the day. Uh, okay, well, most of the players look pretty fit, and that's very nice to see. I'm uh, just going to agree to the opposition instructions. All the other things I'm not really going to care about for now. Okay, so this is the strat that I'm going with. Uh, although this is Milan. And I might want to play it a little bit defensive. But hey, if you're Liverpool, we just go all in. Uh, filter. Okay, let's stick off the unavailable players. Let's just click quick pick first and see what happens. So this is what the game suggests. So how I'm playing Liverpool is I'm playing these two as ball playing defenders but as stoppers and this is important because um, it means that they would walk out a little further to slow down the player from getting to the box if you use them as ball playing defender defend they're going to hold position which means that they will wait until the player arrives at the box before defending there is a difference so let's say you have a player who's beating trying to beat the offside trap um, your player is already going to be there, they can take them down. But let's say the player beats the offside trap a lot earlier because they're running from the midfield line. If you put someone like Van Dijk on pole position, he's going to stay waiting at the penalty box until the player runs up. And this could be risky because they might be able to find a pass a lot sooner. But if you have someone who's like a stopper, uh, they're going to be able to run out and slow the player down before they can get a pass. And that reduces the chances of you conceding. I've tested this. Um, I could be wrong, but I've tested it. Uh, so yeah, that's that. As for the Trent and Robertson, I've found significant success by putting them as wingback supports rather than win wingback attacks. And the real difference is that uh, wingback attacks, is going they're going to run all the way to the bloody byline and attempt crosses. This is not important uh, because we have a lot of attacking players. So putting them further at the back and giving them instructions like cross from deep or whatever, is going to help them significantly. So for Trent, for example, uh, I'm going to I'm, I'm training him to try long range passes so that he doesn't have to run all the way here to get his passes off. And similarly for Robo, uh, they could do something like that. Let's see, passing, long range passes. Uh, with passing ability, isn't the case with him? Wait, what? Really? Or his passing is not that good? Okay, uh, how about we try cross the ball early. Yeah, that'll do. He's going to cross early. Yeah, that should help him. So you can try a uh, long range pass, uh, cross early. All of these things are pretty good in general for these two players. Uh, anyone you anyone you play in this kind of tactic. Now, the important thing that these four, they feed the ball to midfield and then they pressure the attack. They basically compress the attack line from midfield onwards. And that's how this, this trick works, right? Because you have this, this diamond of these five players and then one center player to connect all of them, uh, be the third man in every situation and the pivot uh, who's going to be able to move the ball up. That's, that's what I'm using Carvalho for. Why Carvalho? Well, I would say that his stats of playing is, as an attacking midfielder are significantly good actually <laughs> like they're pretty good and there's no reason not to but a lot of these players up front Liverpool's four can easily be rotated and that's really really cool now uh, I'm going to sort by injury risk and I'm going to take out all the players who have a high risk of injury 
and this is how I'm going to preserve some of them. Uh, it may not be ideal because some of them are very good players, but I'm going to do this first. And I'm going to see who I can play with, and then I'm going to bring some of these players in. Uh, Elliot is lacking sharpness, but it's fine. Um, Jota is... Is also lacking sharpness, but it's fine because it's Jota. The guy is pretty insane. Uh, so no reason not to use him. Let's see. Uh, let's let's look at our twenty ones and see if there's any of them that are useful as well. I'm gonna stop the potential. Lewis Kumas, um, also a good central attacking player. Hmm. High injury risk. Nah, this guy is not ready to be used. So, okay, so let's say you have sorted out your players by injury risk and you've gotten rid of all the high injury risk players and then you realize you still have some slots. Now you can try, try to fit in some players who you think might be able to handle the game. So you can also look at their training ratings to decide if they've been training pretty well just to know if they performed decently well. So Carvalho hasn't been training well enough, but knowing him, I think he should be able to handle it. Uh, but Matip has not been doing well in training. Uh, we could use him as backup, but a lot of these other players, I think we can just take them in. So let's take, let's put Milner here, put Simikas here. Um, let's put Jota here, let's put Thiago. Uh, actually, we can put Thiago, you can even put Thiago in attack actually, but you know what, we'll put him in midfield, it's fine. Uh, we can put Elliot in the sub, and let's see, that's it, that's about the players we have. Okay, let's take Firmino. I'm going to use him in the center. I prefer to use Firmino as an advanced playmaker or attacking midfielder just because he's better at it. Like, that's pretty much what uh, Firmino's real role is. Like, instead of being a striker, using him as an advanced playmaker is just making it just significantly better, right? Uh, and, and on attack is also pretty good because his dribbling skills are pretty insane. So, you want to use it as much as you can. Uh, it's not exceptionally great but his spare is pretty high so if you're able to use it uh that's still pretty cool you know what support is fine attacking midfielder let's see attack attacking midfielder support you know what we'll use him as an am support just because i would want him to hmm. no his teamwork is too good using uh, anyone as an advanced playmaker and they have very good teamwork is going to be much better so let's just do that uh, let's sort, let's see, some of these other players, we can still use them, but the risk of injuries, man, it's kind of scary. Let's take Diaz, Robo, Virgil, Jude, Gomez, Fabio, um, Fabinho, what's wrong with you? Just lacking sharpness? Okay. And Matip. Yep, okay, I think that's it, that's good, so... That's about our players. Let's see how we can use these. Um, we can put Van Dyke here. Van Dyke is our captain, so we'll try to keep him in the in play. I've switched Henderson off from captain. Um, given Van Dyke captain and given Robbo, uh, what do you call this, uh, vice captain. So that's something you can do if you really want to try that. Uh, oh, I never knew that he has a partnership with Jota, actually. That's pretty cool. Uh, but Jota is pretty good as a complete forward because of his heading. He has really good heading. And not using him as a complete forward is a bit of a waste. So if we put him up there, Nunes, on the other hand, um, his stats are okay. But look at this. If you put him here as an inside forward attack, his stats are still pretty good. Like he has excellent acceleration and pace to get in and to get the pass rather than take the shot. So it's also one way of using Nunes. Uh, but you know what? We're going to use Diaz here. I think this game is going to be tough and I have no choice but to use the players who have high risk. So... This is one way of doing it, uh, but if you do have your players with less injury risk or whatever, uh, then it's fine. But I had difficult midweek games as well, so it is what it is. You just got to work with what you got. Uh, let's bring Matip in, and then we'll swap him out if he doesn't do well with, uh, you know, Van Dyke. We'll swap him out for Kanate. Uh, sure, we'll use Bellingham for a while. I want to use Nunes instead of Jota. I think my main concern is that Jota's not fit enough, so this is still a little bit safer. Um, or should we go three three midfielders?
yeah you know what i think we'll do this so this is another little technique i use is i use one extra bbm uh and remove the attacking midfielder if i feel that i need to be a little bit more defensive but i don't play a defensive midfielder it's a little bit different uh it's something you can play around with and try to experiment a few different ways but for me this worked for liverpool so i'm just going to try it and see how it goes now all these players who have high injury risk i want to switch them out if i can uh at half time so um it, it's just what i gotta deal with the way it goes uh, I also know people have played around with the training schedule, like creating your own training schedule, and that way you uh, reduce the chance of injuries. Uh, you can do that, but this is what I'm going to go. Oh, I actually forgot to show you guys some of the tactics settings here. Just to show you, I actually do uh, shorter passing directness, and tempo is slightly higher instead of the maximum. This reduces the chances of injuries while also increasing uh, the ball retention, which means um possession is significantly increased i also remove play for set pieces i work the ball into the box in transition i continue the counter press and the counter but if i feel that it's something like manchester city i often go regroup because it is very difficult to counter press a team like man city they're pretty insane in holding the ball so it's kind of pointless to counter press someone who has very good possession because you're never going to be able to retrieve the ball quick enough before they are already charging into attack uh, as for the lines, I keep them both high, and it's very important to use step up more in order to compress the midfield. If you don't use step up more, uh, they actually have more gaps in midfield, and you keep getting warnings about it. Um, so that's that. Um, no, I guess. Confirm changes. Yeah, okay, let's go. Okay, uh, let me just put some sounds here for you guys. If that helps. Um, so I'm actually doing key highlights only, uh, so you have to uh, do the key highlights. Uh, that way I can see how the game is being played. Uh, I also play around with some of these formation settings and whatever. Uh, you can use the visualizer or, or anything like that. All these things are pretty cool like you. Most of these settings. Uh, the leader scores from all the other games uh, I don't need to do this info match stats are already shown visualizer match momentum uh, Liverpool pass map Liverpool shot map that's being shown here so I guess formation should be fine but this is one way I can keep tab of the opponent's formation so I do this no that's okay at least I know that a lot of the pressure is coming from the left. I think they're trying to uh, attack Trent's wing. So, sure, they can try. Right, uh, we can see that Nunes is not performing very well. And uh, Diaz is also getting tired. Very scary. Not 
be not too careful. Oh, okay, so Darwin, you gotta go. Uh, let's bring Jota in, get him warmed up. Uh, the rest of these guys actually seem pretty fit and they're performing reasonably well. No real reason to switch them out other than to preserve them for the next game. Um, you know what, let's go a little bit longer to see if anyone can hear how they drop. And go with Salah. to the 71 minutes and I think I have to start preserving some of these players. Let's bring Elliot in. Let's bring uh, Carvalho I think. And so the youngsters have taken over the front. Jota struggling to meet up just to encourage him a little bit. Um, Hendo I think can be reserved here. Let's go bring Milner in because we're using a three-man midfield so there's gonna be a lot of pressure there. Uh, we could save one more sub. We have a close past three minutes. Okay, Virgil is struggling a little bit. Let's bring in Gomez. We don't need um, Fanate because I think he's already doing. Like he's he's actually working quite a bit. Uh, we can't sub Trent here. That's fine. We have the first to end the game. Trent is more fit than uh, Van Dijk, so. But it looks like it's a comfortable 2 0 win. There we go. A very neat and comfortable 2 0 win with no injuries. Super cool. Um, very happy with the way you guys played. I got no reason to say anything otherwise. I think that's fine. Uh, Darwin did struggle to net anything, but I think it's okay because we still managed to get our goals either way. Okay, so um, we have Fulham's match coming up. Here's another thing you can do is you can sort here by the high injury risk. You can highlight these players and you can actually give them um, training, rest, one day. Okay, this is a cool trick. If you do this, they don't train for one day, but watch their injury risk instantly vanish the next day it's going to be super cool right uh, as for everyone else you want to just automat automatic and then set to physio recommendation if you do this it doesn't as you can see even though i'm highlighting everything it doesn't affect the fact that i've uh, affect the fact that i've already given the one day of rest to these players so there's nothing to worry about here right during this method you can actually make sure that um, you have more double intensities going on um, yeah that's something you can do if you want to so you know what let's just do that and let's just set to physio right yeah that's cool uh let's see the inbox and see what's coming up nothing unusual here calling him praise him sure here you go buddy your praise um but yeah otherwise it's another nice day let's just save the game up before we proceed any further and i'll go to the next match and show you how the fulham game goes and how this is how the one day of rest is going to really help us. Um, and let me tell you that it you don't really need to give the players who play uh, that much training because they're already improving as they play. So having the one extra day of rest might really help you to meet the pace of the midweek matches. And that's very, very important. Gallagher is actually back. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, sure, we'll see how to use him. I see. Let's see. Goalkeeper. Decent stats. Mm. Mm. The 
determination is fairly low. But anyway, he recommends against giving it, so we're not going to bother. There we go. There's the um, training issue. Uh, so Trent got the Bruce Shin. Uh, looks like it must have happened from... Let's see, him not having the day off, basically. Yeah, for some reason, he he didn't have the day off that caused this. Uh, oh well, it's fine. It's my fault as well for, for not subbing up, him out. Kind of expected the... I mean, I'd rather risk him having the injury than Van Dyke, so that's also another issue. Um, he's been doing great in training. Sure, let's just give these guys a praise. I like just keeping them happy by doing this, so it's fun. Just a little bit more interaction, I guess. I'm just playing this a little bit faster because I'm recording this, but otherwise I take my time as well to check on certain things. Uh, whether I want to specifically assign people to get influenced by others, but for now I feel that I, I just want the assistant to do that. Automates a lot of things, makes it a lot faster. Uh, oh, they've been called out for international duty. Uh, let's see whose instructions I can actually meddle with. Um, Carvalho. Mm. You know what? I actually don't mind letting these guys play the full time. Mm. Yeah, I actually don't mind. It's fine. They can they can go for it. It'll deal with it with our rotated squad. Sure. Okay, Fulham game. Uh let's do another quick pick here just to see who comes in. Uh, Milner takes the right wing. Actually, Henderson is a pretty good right winger. The reason for that is uh, right back. Sorry, his crossing is thirteen. It's one of the highest in the team, uh, which is an which is a very pretty funny and interesting stat. But let's just see this, right? Let's just go to attributes, physic, not technical, crossing. There we go. If you look at some of the rest crosses in the game, um, we actually have Elliot Salah, Thiago, Calvin Ramsey, Curtis Jones, all of these people who are mid, uh, who are like play further up front, and then there's Henderson who can play in a defensive position is very good defensive stats overall uh like if you actually put him here and click um uh, complete wing back look at his stats these are great stats for for a right back so i'm going to put hendo there uh i'm going to put let's see whose injury risk is pretty high uh let's take out some of these guys first and let's plan without those let's see we don't have enough players to fit in. No, it's fine. You know what? We'll, we can we can deal with it. Uh, Milner's crossing is 12. Not as good as Hendo, huh? That's kind of funny. Okay. Um, let's see. Firmino. You know what? We could do a three uh, 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 attacking midfielder for the Fulham game. So let's bring Bobby in. Uh, let's bring... Carvalho instead of Diaz. Uh, they're lacking sharpness, is the reason they're not being picked. Mm. That's fine. Uh, let's just swap the potential and see who's not picked. Let's take Elliot. Let's take Fabinho. Let's take Pascal Schur. Uh, these guys are injured. Hmm, Jota should be fine. Yeah, Jota should be fine. Gomez. Uh, Ox and yeah, okay, all the others are fine. So let's just swap this by risk again. Hmm, Gomez crossing is not very good, which is why I don't play him in right back. Let's do Thiago Bellingham. Pretty insane midfield. Mm. We could also do Carvalho Elliott. And 
You can also do this. You can also do Firmino forward, uh, Nunes wing, and Carvalho center. You can also do it this way. Do this inside forward attack. Let's just try this and see how different the game plays out. This is fun because I really like how versatile the uh, front four and five players are. Okay, see how it goes. Cordova. Always works just for you guys. I don't know why the video thing works, but it's good for Okay, let's go to the second half. Let's see. Hendo is getting a little bit tired in that uh, right back position. Sub him for Simicas. Darwin is not doing very well. Let's bring Diaz in. Uh, and Elliot is not doing very well. Let's bring Salah in. Uh, and let's just give them a talk here. Go and do it. Come on. Keep an eye on some of these players' health. Bellingham's dropping. Uh, we're gonna bring Fabinho. Let's bring Fabinho in. I want to keep Milner for Hendo. Come on, do more, do more. Uh, we're 75 minutes. Hendo is low. Let's bring Milner into his position. I actually noticed this that uh, the game is just Salah tends to lose possession a lot more than a lot of other players. It's possible that he, he, he takes a lot of one on one of himself and tries to uh, uh, gain possession by uh, selling the goals. But he also loses a lot of uh, uh, loses the ball quite a bit. So Thiago, we don't have any more subs. So we don't have a choice but to just try to press this. Red card. Yikes, bro. Bro. Okay, we, thank God we brought Fabinho in. Uh, we can actually do it this way. Um, solo midfield, something I can do. Maybe. Mm. Mm, you know what? Let's bring him here to DLP support. We gotta change some of the tactics here to deal with this. Let's go uh, more direct, tempo a lot higher. Um, transition, we're gonna have to regroup because we don't have enough defenders. Out of possession. Uh, we're gonna have to drop off more here. Uh, 
Uh. Alright, let's do this. Let's try to see whether we can at least get a goal in. There we go. Now we're even. It's 10-10. It's fine. We're okay. Uh, we don't need to drop off more. We can step up more, actually. Uh, I think the increase in intensity is going to help us. Let's just go for the counter press now. We're 10-10. We're pretty even. Right, let's go and let's fire up the team. Let's go for a very attacking mentality. I doubt it. I think it's There we go. There we go. That's okay. okay, now we just want to keep this lead. Let's just go very defensive and let's just. Uh, I think we should win this because we only have four minutes left, but you'll never know. So we're going to just go drop the defensive line a little bit. Um, and. Going to in transition, regroup, hold the shape uh, in possession. Uh, let's just keep this tempo a lot lower and time waste as much as we can because hey, they're like Chelsea sometimes. Um, you gotta do it if you gotta do it. Uh, let's bring Carvalho to midfield. Uh, and let's bring Bobby here. Let's do that. All right, we just gotta hold this uh, four. I'm pretty much good to go. to get the win somehow we managed to slug it through um yeah let's just make sure that they don't get complacent um just make Thiago a little bit happier because he wasn't very happy when he said that everyone else seems good so that's great somehow managed to slug the win what a tough game mid-week game it this is just the way EPL works and just so stressful sometimes uh let's see all those ones with the high injury risk you guys like an extra day off one day so two days rest in total that's fine uh and as for the rest of you let's just uh auto this and then set to recommendation okay let's see it's in the inbox two days andrew that's fine two days is absolutely fine van dyke is banned for one match and salah gets a goal salah you are insane Right, let's um, save that. Wow. I'm glad Robo's um, tight groin wasn't as bad as we thought it would be. But uh, yeah, there you have it. Somehow we managed to find these wins through these games uh, using the players that we have. Wow, Nico Williams. He's a natural in a couple of positions. This guy's insane. Why did Liverpool ever sell him? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, sure, we'll just add him to the shortlist. We'll deal with that later. Not interested in signing for Liverpool. We'll get there. We'll 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 put a scout on him, make him interested. Sure. Uh, okay. This is another cool thing. It's called natural fitness. Um. I often use this as a gauge to know uh, if a player has a risk of getting injured uh, because I can't see the injury susceptibility. It's not a guarantee, uh, but from what I realize, it seems to kind of be true for the most part. Um, it's not always true, but it does kind of help. Another, another column you can also add to compare with is... Um, 
Okay, that's an actual fitness, right? Mental aggression. Stamina, strength. Stamina and strength also matters because let's say your player takes a tackle. Um, strength actually determines how how much they get affected by that tackle. So someone like a goalkeeper doesn't really need a lot of strength because they don't don't deal with tackles that much. But if you see someone like Thiago, uh, his natural fitness is not that high and his strength is pretty low, which means if he gets tackled in the in, you know at, at the right time, he can get injured for a really long time. That's basically it. Um, so yeah, these are just some stats, but there's also the hidden stat which tells you whether the player does in fact get injured, uh, which I can't see. So, well, you work with what you got. Um, let's see. Determination. There we go. Jude Bellingham. Absolutely insane uh, determination stat. Like, like, let's just, let's just, like, start for a player who has that much determination, right? Um, let's just clear this. And search for under twenty three uh attributes termination make it like nineteen um yeah that yeah okay that's fine stop by determination there we go uh let's see some of these guys are pretty insane um hmm. This guy's got decent stats too, but it's still pretty young. It's hard to gauge because some of these other stats are not very good. His technique is nice. Um, actually, you know what? I don't mind showing you guys how I would scout for a player. He's got determination, flair, uh, finishing, technique, uh, stamina, strength, pace. All these things I really like. All the physical stats are really good. Natural fitness. Balance, jumping, reach, not very important. Vision, teamwork, um, work rate, positioning. All these are really nice stats. Uh, goalkeeping stats, not necessary. Uh, composure, concentration, decisions, composure, also important. Anticipation is important for a striker. Uh, first touch is important overall. Passing is very important. Tackling penalty, all these things not very important. Hitting, no dribbling, no crossing, no. Okay, all these are pretty decent. Mm. Yeah, okay. Now let's drop all of these together to like 15. Okay, uh, let's go 14, 13, 12. There we go, we got some pretty interesting players. Now, uh, out of all these stats, if you ask me which which should be the ones that you you know you wouldn't mind dropping further, let's say I put this at ten. Um, I would say that you can scout for all these at ten first, and then increase certain things like, uh, let's see, increase the determination to like fifteen, uh, increase something like technique to like fifteen. Uh, and then you can increase something like stamina to, I don't know, 12, 15. Could do that. Natural fitness. 15. There we go. So we actually have some players that we narrowed this down to. Uh, and they don't have to be 15. You can go like 14, 14. Because they're still pretty decent stats. Even if they're 13 or 12, they're pretty still you know pretty decent stats. Uh, 12, 12, oh, a little bit of lag there, there we go, teamwork, make that 12, natural fitness to 12, uh, acceleration 12, sure, and now we just pump this up. And it'll narrow down the list to like who is really valuable. So I think this only brings one guy, David Fratesi. Uh, but this is a lot more to work with. So let's see, where's David Fratesi? Uh, this one. Let's see his stats. This guy's pretty interesting stats. He's uh, 22 years old. Uh, has a great future actually. Looking at his overall stats, he even works well as a BBM. He's an excellent BBM to be honest. 22. In five years, I can see all these going green. 
kind of crazy. Uh, he also has 15 determination, which is really nice. Um, so you know what? I could just highlight all these players and just right click add to my shortlist indefinitely, and we could start to uh, scout them. So let's just scout some of these because they are international players. So the scouting is limiting me to one week, uh, but it's fine. Let them just scout out and get as much information as we can. If we sort them by potential, some of these are already pretty good, but they're pretty expensive. The cheapest one is Gatoni. Some of these are pretty cheap. Some of these are under 10 million. Yeah, these are like under 10 million. And out of them, this is the only guy who's 19. Uh, and let's see. What are your stats? What do you do? Your crossing is not very good, so you're not very good on the wing. Uh, but overall, you have pretty nice stats. You're only 19 years old, huh? You know what? Let's just talk to his... Wait, where's his agent? Hmm? Liverpool are rumored to be interested in this player. Since when? <laughs> I didn't know this. Um, okay. Scout report. Starting in progress. I guess we'll wait for his scout report and then we'll decide. But he seems like an interesting player. But yeah, this is one way to overall gauge like good players. Uh, you can also make all 10s and some of them 12s. And then you can also sort by age. Uh, to get even more details on, you know, like players like Juninho, uh, and some of these that, you know, you probably know in real life as good players, but, uh, you know, FM doesn't tell you much, so, that's one way of knowing it. Let's take all of these there, because Nico Williams here as well. Uh, let's report. Oh, there we go. Yeah, this guy, this guy's pretty scary. Um. Okay, that's about it. That's the gist of this uh, and some gameplay as well to show you guys. But yeah, it is what it is. FM is super fun. Uh, it's something that I only buy once every two years to play it for a while. Um, but man, I've been sp I spent so much, so many hours in this game that um, it is it is really really a fun simulation game. It's one of the best, arguably the best simulation game that you can find available. Uh, so no games because of international duty uh, until the Arsenal game. But that's about it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. That's just a tip if you guys are planning to manage Liverpool or any team in general. Uh, always go to your staff first, get your scouting all set up. Uh, make sure you also set up the uh, training facilities for those you want to put on the development list. Uh, and then on scouting, you can scout using the uh, existing players so you know how good they are. That way it will find players who are similar even though they're younger. Uh, and then take note of things like determination, the physical attributes which are very important to keeping a player fit. Uh, and then when it comes to training, you want to set the rest uh, and also give them extra day of rest just so that they recover faster for the next game. It's not very important that they train because resting is more important than training so that they recover before the next game, especially if you have a lot of midweek games, that's important. Uh, in terms of the tactics, tactics itself, uh, you could do what I'm doing, which is drop the tempo a little bit uh, and decrease the passing directness, increase your chance of keeping possession while decreasing the intensity, reducing injuries overall. And also, when you do pick players for your team, sort them by injury risk and see who you have available first before you pick those players with high risk of injury. Uh, these are all you know, basic stuff that I could give you guys and show you. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. That's the gist from me. Uh, overall, I think Liverpool has an excellent youth academy and something that you can definitely take you know, advantage of. And I believe that's also the case in real life. They are trying to use a lot of their youth players, which is really cool to see. Um, I'm really excited to see uh, who else Liverpool brings in in real life transfer. Uh, I think Cody Gakpo is an excellent signing, but I'm looking forward to. Uh, I think it's Enzo Fernandez who they will most likely bring. So, uh, two really good players uh, overall. If we were to scout them here, just to show you. Uh, let's see. Cody Gakpo, there we go. Okay, there we go. Cody Gagpo, Dutch, uh, decent determination. It doesn't really show that his uh, potential is very high. But if you look at his stats, it seems pretty obvious that he does have a good future. He's a potentially a very good left winger. Um, 
good cover for Luis Diaz as well. Uh, in inside forward attack duty, he seems to be very good with his finishing and long shots. Overall, great stats. 23 years old, 7 years to improve. I think this guy is going to be pretty insane for Liverpool. Uh, other than Cody Gakpo, the other one was Enzo. Uh, Enzo Fernandez. There we go, the Argentinian. A lot younger uh, and a lot more potential to be a very, very good BBM. Uh, he's being scouted in this game as well, as you can see, because... He does show up whenever you look for players with good determination, good flair, and stuff like that. His overall uh, stamina and physical attributes are also pretty insane. I think this guy will be a great signing for Liverpool if they manage to get him. Uh, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne is showing up, just letting us know that he's just insane. Uh, Kevin De Bruyne's stats are pretty monstrous. Look at this. These are monster stats. Yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, but... Does he have the legendary status though? Mm. Legendary attacking midfielder, yeah, he does have that. Yeah. I think the only ones in Liverpool who has legendary is Mohamed Salah. Yeah. Yeah, Mohamed Salah is the only one who's actually legendary by media description. Um you could also do scouting for players who you think have been scouted by other teams or what before based on media description this is another cool trip uh, trick uh, not media handling style uh, media description can I find that no okay let me look for look for it here general uh Huh. Uh, let's see. International scouting. Uh. Okay. Let me just try under twenty one like that. Uh, oh, you know what? Let me just try it thirty one. That's fine. Uh, let's just look for a player with technique. Uh, and. I guess Flair, these 15. Okay, let's do that. There we go. We got a bunch of players here. Let's uh, add in a column here. There should be media description. There we go. It's here. And we should be able to find the legendary, um, what do you call this? Description, uh, elite, legendary attacking midfielder. There we go. We got Kevin De Bruyne here. Uh, so, yeah, this is something interesting that you could play around with and look for players who may have certain uh, stats that you're looking for. Like, let's say, let's just look for something like finishing, right? Say I want, I want to have one of the best strikers that I could find. So. Finishing is 15, technique is 15, uh, probably is composure, decisions, uh, may not need flair actually. Uh, okay, let's get these at 16. Uh, you know that some of these have the legendary tag um, in terms of, uh, what do you call this, the quality. You can also increase their age to find more legendary players because uh, a lot of legendary players are a lot older as well. So there's Kevin De Bruyne, there's Lewandowski, there's Benzema, Messi. Yeah, Felix, some of these guys. You, you, I think uh, it's the same case for Ronaldo, but he's a lot older, so. Uh, let's see. Veteran. Um, actually, what do they rate Ronaldo's stats as? Uh, I'm not sure. How they rate Ronaldo's stats here. Attacking, elite, midfielder. Elite is pretty good too, but legendary is just a status that's super rare. It's but this is all determined by the media. So these players generally, if they have these tags, it means they're just gonna be so much more expensive to even look for. Um, wait, why am I not seeing Cristiano Ronaldo? Hmm. Kind of strange. Hmm. Okay, let's just look straight for Cristiano.
Wait, what? Cristiano Ronaldo? Yes. Oh, I put a hitch in his name. No wonder. Um, sure, there we go. Oh, it says veteran striker. Oh, I see. So they've changed it. Because he's a lot more senior now. Right. Right. Huh. Anyway, that's some insane finishing stat. With the determination of 20. That's when you know it's Ronaldo. Yeah. See who else has a determination of 20. Um, yeah, some of these guys. Look at this Erling Holland. Uh, pretty interesting. Uh, let's go for under 23s. Not many, actually, who are under 23s who are strikers. Roll uh, any. Do that. All these are determination 20s. Means they are generally very, very good players. Uh, you could use this as a gauge to decide if you want to pick them up. Uh, there we go. Some of these should be, in fact, uh, wonder kits. So if you go all the way down... Oh, actually, no, no, I need to sort it the other way. Sort this the other way. Young, young winger. Go to the Ws. Young goalkeeper, young fullback, young centre-back, winger. Um, just before winger, I think. Should be wonder kits. There we go. There's only one here. Most of the Wonder Kids determinations are not that high, huh? That's interesting to know. Yeah, that's pretty interesting to know that not a lot of them have determination of above uh, 15. But I guess it is what it is. But yeah, this is one way you can just look up for who the media identifies as Wonder Kids. But as I said, the hidden abilities are not really shown by the media. So it's just one way you can play the game clean without having the editor. Um, you may risk losing out on some hidden gems, but... I don't know, I'm not too particular. I feel you know it's just it's just way cleaner to play that way instead of having too much info. So yeah, there we go. There's some wonder kids here showing up. Um Davi is showing here. These are all really, really powerful players. Kamavinga. Uh let's just add these to the short list. Sure. Yep. Those are my tips and tricks and uh players you can actually keep and sell. But yep, see you guys in the next one. Take care.